two, one. This is a 3D printed rocket powered toroidal propeller that is easily the largest one in the world. And that's because as far as I know, it's the only one. A rocket powered propeller has been on my bucket list for quite a while now. And today I'm gonna to tell you how I made it, what is unique about toroidal propellers, and what happens when you fail to adequately reinforce a rapidly rotating rocket. Now I was up against a few obstacles going into this project. At most, I'd 3D printed a few parts for a project, never the entire project. The biggest rocket I'd ever fired used one of these tiny motors, and that was as a kid. Three of these motors on one propeller was a whole new league for me. And not only had I never designed a propeller before, I was now attempting to fly a much more complex toroidal design. This was not an encouraging recipe for success. And this is where I need to introduce you to Austin of Holbrook Aerospace. Because of him, I had the ability to make a really cool rocket propeller that could work the first time. He designs propellers and windmill blades professionally. So many, in fact, that he got tired of using standard software and developed his own to make designing propellers much quicker and more accurate. So why did I pick a toroidal design for this project? If you haven't been on the internet for a few months, you could be forgiven for not having heard of toroidal propellers. They are the thing now, thanks to a paper by MIT and a few videos going around. A toroid is simply a ring or donut shape, which you can clearly see reflected in the design of each blade. The paper from MIT asserted that these propellers may have a more acceptable noise profile for wider public drone acceptance, as well as possibly being more efficient. The video circulating the internet no doubt unintentionally went a tiny bit further on the efficiency assertions that MIT may have been pointing towards. This channel often focuses on the aerodynamic efficiency of objects in motion and I immediately began receiving comments on my videos letting me know that I needed to change my aircraft propellers to the toroidal version for even more efficiency gains. Given the information out there, this is quite understandable. Shero Marine has an excellent toroidal propeller on the market for boats, and I have little reason to doubt their increased efficiency claims. These propellers are simply beautiful, and given the recent indications from MIT, you will soon see these everywhere you need better than average performance from a propeller. Right? Maybe. The design is more complex than a typical propeller, but given Austin's involvement, I could now jump in from the sidelines to explore the concept a little. You see, he has converted over 1,500 known airfoils into a vector format, which simply means no matter what size you need your wing, windmill, or propeller to be, the airfoil will be more dimensionally precise than your method of fabrication can be. This is the future of airfoil design. But wait, there's more. Once you give Austin software a few basic inputs, it algorithmically takes the propeller through many iterations to find the best cord, sweep, profile, thickness, and more to give you the best propeller for the job at hand. Just wow. So Bamboo Lab kindly sent me their top of the line 3D printer to do this project. They offered, I said yes, absolutely. As if I wasn't getting upgraded enough already, Bamboo Lab sent a printer for me to put to the test. It took days off the printing time on this project due to its speed and I've had a lot of fun experimenting with the various filaments they offer. It is now my primary printer. Thank you, Bamboo Lab. We will definitely put this to the test. As assembly began on the toroid propellers, I had a lot of time to ponder the hype surrounding them. The annular wing, cited as the inspiration for the recent buzz around this design, may also point to the reason why it may not be widely adopted in the future for aircraft. The creation of thrust from a propeller just like the creation of lift from a wing, results in disturbed fluid flow and vortex formation. How that fluid is disturbed has a lot to do with how much energy is wasted while creating that thrust or lift. While MIT may not have invented the toroidal propeller, they are still relatively new and the studies we have on how they produce thrust are somewhat limited, at least compared to the studies we have on how wings create lift. And the studies on wings producing lift do not point towards toroidal propellers overtaking the production of thrust from your normal, standard, boring, and exceptionally effective propeller. Many concepts have been explored in an attempt to reduce the drag a wing experiences in the creation of lift. Winglets, spheroids, aspect ratio, circular wings, canards, triple surface aircraft, you name it. The simple but difficult to hype lesson learned after all these years is that span is king. It is simpler to fabricate, it weighs less, and aerodynamically, virtually everything is in its favor. But you may be saying, wait, all those airliners you see carry winglets around because they reduce the drag on a wing, so you must be wrong. As it turns out though, as a rule of thumb, if you had a winglet one meter tall, you would only need to extend the wing 0.4 meters to experience the same reduction in drag while saving weight and complexity. Yet there is a good reason why winglets exist, and that points to why toroidal propellers have a future. 
Airliners have winglets because they are artificially limited in wingspan in order to fit into certain aircraft classifications and airliner gates. A winglet adds efficiency while not adding wingspan. This is the same reason circular wing aircraft are interesting, which is the aircraft equivalent of a toroidal propeller. In places where having a greater span is not an option, these design choices start to make a lot of sense. Like on the underside of a boat, where Charles Marine is demonstrating that making the most of limited space with a circular or toroidal propeller works quite well. That being said, where you can add span, you should. Boeing found span addition to be so much more effective than multiplanar additions such as winglets that they added folding mechanisms, i.e. weight and complexity, on their 777 airliner wingtips and still came out ahead of winglets in overall efficiency. The point I'm making is this. Think of situations where propeller diameter has to be limited for practical reasons and not purely efficiency. These are areas where toroidal propellers should be explored and compared with other options and may indeed find a home. I am sorry for pumping the brakes a little on the toroidal hype train if you were on it. By way of apology, here is some video of a rapid unscheduled disassembly of one of the rockets I built. That's it for the theory behind these propellers. Let's get back to making a few. The bamboo printer has a 10 inch square print size limit, so I took the opportunity to cut down the propeller into small sections and give this rocket a 4th of July theme. The sections were bonded one at a time and then the whole propeller was fiberglassed. Wanting to lower the necessary power to get this rocket spinning, I made a little bearing supported spin table to go over the launch rod. It seemed to work well enough. Here is the main pad and then I just have this 3D printed hub and some carbon fiber rods to hold the bearings. And then we have a spin plate. Run the rod through the whole assembly. And there you go. That's a good launch pad. Given the somewhat improbable chances of success of these propellers, the effort to incorporate a recovery mechanism was skipped for now. I use this launch control box that has the safety key. You have to push it in fairly hard to connect the circuit, and that's before you can even push the button to launch it. So that was one safety feature, plus having 40 feet of cable to physically separate you from the rockets as much as possible. This is supposed to connect to a car battery, but I did not want cars in the vicinity, so I actually used a three cell um, lithium ion battery, which would provide the same voltage, and just made a little harness that the alligator clips could clip onto, and that seemed to work just fine. What do we have here? I purchased the largest motors allowed without a high power rocketry certification. There are much more powerful motors available, but I assure you I was plenty intimidated by this amount of power. Being that these are the largest motors I can get, they're still meant to fly something like this, which only weighs an ounce and a half before adding the motor up to a mile high. I assure you these are not one and a half ounces, but this is on a ballistic trajectory and these are actually flying. So I really had no idea what to expect. Because of this, I printed two rockets for this project, one 70% the size of the other. I figured this would give a higher chance of getting the power right for at least one propeller. This turned out to be a good decision. To reduce the risk of a single motor misfire on these three motor propellers, I took the time to solder each igniter onto the launch wire harness. The thought of an alligator clip slipping off one motor as I wired up the others did cross my mind. A test of the system was also in order. See if we get a tone for a good connection with the safety key. We do, so we have connection, connectivity on at least one of these, hopefully all of them. Woo! Good test. It was time to head out to the desert, where any miscalculation on my part would only result in loss of the project. Yup, I had to rent a moving truck to get the bigger propeller out there. It's fun to bring you along for the projects I do here on YouTube, but it's also fun to get family involved. Even though I couldn't guarantee my niece this project would be exciting, I guaranteed it anyway and got her to show up. I also brought a few rockets along to warm up with. Like I said, it's been ages since I've done this and I didn't want to just jump into the deep end of the pool. Get the tone, now you go. Ooh. Oh my goodness, that was quick. Where is it? Oh. Boom! Well, that's the motor. I don't know where the rocket went. Back to black. I see it coming down. 
I wanted to try a little free flight rocket plane, so I made one up quick and gave it a shot. Well, it's it's a uh, it's light and it's made out of rubber foam, so it's not gonna hurt. But <laughs> three, two, one. It needs a little more work. And lastly, the Chuck model from the rubber band plane project got the rocket Chuck treatment. Chuck model, here we go. All the glory. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, none of these really bode well for the big one. <laughs> Thoroughly warmed up, but not exactly riding high on a string of successes, it was time for the big guys. I suspected the bigger propeller would have the least chance of success, so I led with that one. I inserted all the motors and igniters, and with the family observing from far away, it was go time. This is terrifying. I've never launched a big rocket, and I've never been so close to one, and I'm just, I'm scared. I'm wondering if my plywood is thick enough. Oh. Oh, I'm shaking. I'm so scared. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. That was pretty satisfying, and apparently I didn't need to bring fireworks after all. Alright guys, I assume this one's going to fly apart as well, and probably much quicker. Hopefully it'll get higher, but definitely much quicker, because I uh, it's not any stronger than the last one, and it's going to be spinning faster, so... Yeah, I was kind of bummed because I didn't bring fireworks, but I think we got the fireworks. All right, the after action report. Oh, that was way out there. So they didn't even break where I joined them. They just broke along the printed parts. See, those are the joints. Mm -hmm. And it just broke right in the middle. Oh, I Can wish I'd... Sure, I wish I'd made them stronger. At least the second one, I wish I'd made that one stronger. It looks like the heat from the rocket casing was able to melt the whole way through the rocket holder. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn, sometimes you get a little bit of both. The interesting thing is, after the smaller rocket separated, part of it went and set the altitude record for the day. That gives me an idea for next year's 4th of July video. Austin is generously allowing me to share the files for the rocket propeller with supporters of this channel. Head over to Patreon to check them out. Link in the description. Gavin, what is that? Oh, this is a base jumping suit for me to use in one of the upcoming videos. Oh, is base jumping safe?